This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. Stick around to see how you can get high quality 3D models for free. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at SketchUp for iPad. The folks at Trimble have just announced SketchUp for iPad and it is a very interesting tool to play with. Now, we've already mentioned that SketchUp was coming for iPad sometime last year and it's very interesting to see that we have this tool right now. So today we're going to explore SketchUp for iPad, see what and what you can get, how you can work with this with both the mouse, the pen, your fingers, and of course, if you do own a magic keyboard, how this also comes together. So for those who like to take a look at this, you can simply go over to the app store if you do own an iPad and download SketchUp for iPad. And the beautiful thing is this is also compatible with iPhones. And you know, I just don't think that tools like these should be used on an iPhone as they don't really have the screen estate for some of the functionalities that you might want to explore. So with that said, once you download this, it is worth mentioning that this tool comes with a price tag. So it is subscription based, which simply means that for you to actually take full advantage of everything that comes with this tool, you may need to pay $119 per year since this is subscription. But then let that not deter you from testing this tool because you'll be having about seven to 10 days free trial for you to use it. Now, if you open up SketchUp for iPad, you would notice that it looks pretty similar to what you have with SketchUp Pro. And this is everywhere. So if you click on create new, it opens up and you can tell that it looks very, very similar. So let's just simply go ahead and uh, close all of this and then explain them in detail. First off is navigating. How you navigate across this is very simple. With your two fingers, you can, you know, orbit like so. You can pinch in and pinch out. And you might be asking, what about panning? So this is where it begins to get even more interesting. If you already own a keyboard, you already know how to work with SketchUp. The key binds for SketchUp Pro and this is exactly the same thing. Tap H on the keyboard. Then you've switched to the hand tool. So I can click and then use one finger to simply move this left and right, up and down. And I think this is like the best way of navigating with this because at this point you can still click. And once you do that, you get your two fingers and again, you can pinch in and pinch out. So we love this new avatar that they have here, which is pretty dope. Now, working with this is also very interesting as there is a huge set of tools that has been ported to this version. So one of them that you would definitely love is the Wayhouse. So with this button, you can simply go over to the Wayhouse, find stuff, download stuff. And this is a 3D Wayhouse and you can find anything that you want here. So let's say I'm looking for house. Just gonna type the word house, you know, and um, there's a whole lot of houses. There's just a whole lot of different housing stuff that exists. So let's just filter this by the word architecture and I can click on this one click on the download button and that would simply download this right here and you can see how easy it is so I can just go in and click and let that be and we can pinch all the way out and you can see that look at this very very cool now before we even talk about you creating stuff one thing to keep in mind is there is a setting that exists here and this setting is both for the click and move click for your pencil and also there is a setting for the multi-touch. So these settings are just there for you to pick up. And there is also a general setting. So depending on how you like to work, you can find it here. You can see the autosave setting is there as well. Lots of nice things. So if you, like I mentioned before, if you're coming from SketchUp Pro from the desktop and you already own, you know, a keyboard for your iPad, the key binds are the same. If you tap R on the keyboard, you can switch to rectangle, which in this case I can click and drag and click and that way I can create a rectangle and I can click and drag to a point and I can also just go ahead and click. And that way, you know, I create another one, tap E on the keyboard and you can go in and just erase, erase. And let's just go in and erase this one. Let's see, let's zoom right in and click. And right there we can erase that. And at the same time we can click and right there we can erase the other one. The same thing happens if you tap F on the keyboard, you can fill like this. So I can fill it as much as I want, click. And if you choose to work with the pen, which I believe is the all time best tool to work with this, except 
you own a mouse, which we're going to get into very soon. So, you know, if you like to work with a pen, you can also do the same thing. We can pinch all the way in. And with a pen, I can tap P on the keyboard, switch to the pull tool, and this way I can pull. And once I have that pulled all the way up, if you like to undo with your two fingers, if you tap, you can undo stuff. If you like to, you know, simply redo, I love the fact that there's a physical button here that you can use. Not really physical, but there is a button within the UI that you can use. So that way you can simply pull things however you want. You would also notice that not all the tools you like to work with exist here. And to find more, you can click on the street dot button and you find a whole lot of things. One of the cool things is the markup tool. So this tool is uh, taking advantage of the Apple Pencil, which now allows you to sort of annotate. So you can annotate wherever you want. All right. So if you're into annotating, you can annotate and you can clean if you want to. So in this case, if you, you know, you like to write something here, we can go in and write SketchUp. All right, so we can we can go in and write the word SketchUp and we can switch to the eraser and just simply erase that. So if you like to annotate stuff, maybe you like to max certain parts. Yes, you can. So you can make those annotations and you would notice that automatically these annotations are saved as scenes. So this is the scenes that you have and you can notice that the annotations are there and they just have this beautiful transition that sort of gets you into it. Now, other things that you might need to also know is the finger touch. So the finger touch is also something else that makes sense. So if I select, I can use my finger to do some stuff, but I sort of didn't find this like the, the best way to work. I just think working with this or this is best. Now, let's talk about how you work with the mouse. Now, if you do own a mouse, for example, let's say you own a Logitech MX Master 3 mouse, which is, yeah, MX Master 3 mouse, which is the mouse I have here you can use this to a greater advantage than the pen, this, and your fingers, okay? Yeah, this is like the, the gold standard, but if you own a mouse, you feel like you're working on a desktop than you're working on a tablet. That is basically how you feel. So I can switch over to the move tool and I can zoom in, you know, with the middle mouse button, you can zoom in and zoom out. I really wish there's a setting for reverse zooming so that that, that might make more sense. So I can click, drag all the way, click to let go, just like, you know, you could do with the desktop. Now, in terms of um, setting things that you can also do, for example, let's say you would like to do things like the follow me and all that stuff. Yes, you can. Now, before we look at the follow me tool, let's talk about the standard views and the other views. So in this case, you can switch your views however you want. So let's say I would like to look at stuff from this point. Of course you can. You can also switch from perspective to parallel to two points. Those cool views that you've always wanted. Yes, you can. You can. You can do all of that stuff. Let's look at the follow me tool and see how that actually ties up here. And I think this is a this is a good elevation point to look at this. So I, I'm just gonna go in, click, drag to a point like so, and let go. And I think that looks good. And then I would also get the circle or the ellipse tool. And we can also make something about this much. Okay, switch. And then I can clean up, you know, with the eraser tool, we can erase some stuff. And we can also switch and make some selection. So I can make this selection and I can simply make it a component and move this component to wherever I want. So I'm just going to call this a profile. And we can let that profile be. And with the profile tool, if we tap M on the keyboard, we also have the move tool that you guys already love. All right. So once we have this here, the next thing which we're going to do is to simply explode this. So to explode it, you can click on this button and you can simply explode the component. And then that is more like how you are on group a component. Okay. So you explode the components. And with that, if you press the P key, which is the pull key, you would notice you have some stuff, but you'd notice that that tool doesn't exist there. So to find the follow me tool, you can click on this button and then you'll be able to find the follow me tool right here. So I'm just going to click on the follow me tool. And with that, we can simply click and move around. Let's, uh, let's undo that and get the best out of this by moving this here and then select the follow me tool. 
and I'm just gonna go in and follow this all the way to this point. All right. So once we have this ready, you can now go in and you know fix the other ones by eyeballing them and getting that going. And this is just pretty cool. The kind of things that you can you can do with this. In terms of texturing, there's a whole lot of things that these brings to the table. If you press B on the keyboard, you can switch to the buckets, which can allow you select colors and you can just simply go in and throw as much colors as you want. Applying textures here is also pretty, pretty simple. For example, if you like to load in a given texture, you can. So you can make your own textures from here by clicking on the plus sign. So you can make your own textures or your materials. And then if you click right here, you also notice that we have images that we can load up as textures. So I can click on this button and I can load in textures that I already have saved. Now, if you don't have a saved one, let's say you are working on something, you would like to take a picture of something and use it as a texture. Of course you can. So you can say, uh, use image as texture, take photo. And in this case, we already have uh, a blue backdrop right here, which is actually giving a blue sort of tint on the top there. So I'm just going to use this and take a picture. And that would be what we would be using as our texture. So once we have that loaded in, we can click to position the start and we can also click to position the end. So depending on how you like this texture to tie, you can use it. So I can move this all the way to that point, move this all the way to this point. And once I click, you would notice that we have the texture right there. So you can now import textures or should I say you can import textures in here and do lots of lots of crazy and interesting things. And just like we mentioned earlier, for the scene, the scene stuff just works. So in this case, let's say, uh, let's just get rid of this one. If we want to add more stuff to the scene, we can. So you can simply position your scene like so and click on the plus sign. Before we do that, let's make sure that we have some things set properly. And one of the things I like setting up for the scene animation is shadows and also turn on this beautiful stuff for the sunlight. What I would like to do now is just to add a scene. So that creates a scene for us and we can rotate to this position, add another scene, and we can rotate to this other position and add another scene. And this way we can add as many scenes as we want and you can simply have them animate depending on what you like to do at the end of the day. So this is more like, you know, giving iPod users more tools to work with at their own comfort. Before you even think about paying for this, I would strongly suggest that you choose to test it out with the seven to 10 days trial that you have. Test it out as much as you can before you get into purchasing this. And again, if you use your iPad a whole lot, and you also do sketching the whole lot and probably you want to do some cool sketches on the go. Yeah, by all means get this. You would be satisfied, especially if you own an Apple Pencil or if you own a mouse. Now, the thing with the mouse is if you're traveling with a mouse like this, especially for trains or planes, you might not necessarily have enough room to sort of position this. But if you can, if you do own a mouse, that would definitely make your walk in here even way easier if you own a pen, that would also make it work easier. But I would not suggest you using your fingers to work with this or, you know, relying on your trackpad to work with it. This, this, and this should be like your last option. Like exhaust these two options before you go into this option and, you know, finally this one. Other cool things that this comes with includes the view in AR and you can view stuff in AR if you want. And that just simply makes the whole thing immersive. So think about creating a design and then getting into the design. And it's just beautiful where we are right now in terms of technology and what tools the artists have to create their own stuff. And once you're done with your model and you're back to your home screen, if you click on this three point button, you can choose to publish to Trimble Connect or you can share your stuff or download it or export it as USD. And you know, this is more like it. So if you're thinking about getting more models, let's say you're done making this, you want to get even way more models that you can use for your scene, then you should consider checking out Sketchfab. Sketchfab is one of the only places on the internet where you can buy and sell 3D models. And the beautiful thing is Sketchfab is 
one beautiful place that you can also preview your models before you even hit the download button. Thousands and thousands of artists have taken advantage of Sketchfab and so you should also consider checking that out as well. One of the nicest things with Sketchfab is to continually try to hone artist skill by creating challenges and also collaborating with artists to give out free content every week. So every week there is a free model that you can download and work with and you can simply find these models by simply going over to explore and go to downloadables and you will find beautiful models every week. So this is more like it for those who like to get more models on Sketchfab or probably you want to test out this beautiful SketchUp for iPad. Link to this is going to be in the description so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and until I see you guys in the next one. Peace.